But at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're incorporating as many compound movements as possible. That's going to help increase that growth hormone in your body and increase the testosterone. Hey, what's up guys? Gary Walker here and welcome back for another video. In this video, I'm going to take you through a full body T-boosting workout specifically for men over 40. So what makes this a T-boosting workout? Not all exercises are created equal. So you're gonna notice I'm throwing some compound movements in here. When you do compound movements, you're working more than one muscle group. So you're gonna be getting your bigger bang for your buck exercises done with each of these exercises. What I mean by that, you've got compound movements and isolation movements. Whereas if we're just doing a bicep curl, then you're only focusing on isolating the bicep. These other movements are gonna be focused on working everything. We're still gonna throw some biceps in there, but at the end of the day, you wanna make sure you're incorporating as many compound movements as possible. That's gonna help increase that growth hormone in your body and increase the testosterone, which is, as you already know, as a man over 40, naturally your levels have been declining for the past 10, 20, 30 years, depending on how old you are. So the goal with this workout is to get those hormone levels up. With that said, the very first exercise I'm gonna choose is one that I'm pretty sure you've done before. All right, so we're gonna start with a barbell squat. I'm gonna demonstrate a barbell squat, pointing out a couple things I really want you to focus on. But if you don't have access to a barbell or you just don't like the feel of a barbell squat, you can do goblet squats. Goblet squats with the dumbbell is another one of my favorite type of squatting movements, uh, movement, and that's gonna take some of the tension off of your lower back. The key with that one is just keeping the dumbbell as close to your body as possible, all right? Well, here's what you wanna focus on when you're doing that squat or this squat. Anytime you're doing an actual squat, the first thing you wanna focus on is when you drop down, you'll notice a lot of people just break at the knees and start dropping. You actually want to get your glutes back, which is a hip hinge, get your butt back, and then you're gonna sink down. Sink down, under control, press right back up to the top. All right, so you don't have to go ass to grass. That's very popular. Not everybody has that kind of range of motion. What that means is you're sitting all the way down here. That's not necessary to get all the benefits out of this exercise, all right? So at the end of the day, if you feel good and you can do that, you've got that kind of mobility, feel free to do that. Otherwise, hip hinge, drop, even if it's 90 degrees, right back to the top. All right, those are the key things to focus on. Hip hinging and then using your own range of motion. All right, this is the first compound movement I'm gonna suggest in the workout. The second one is gonna be trap bar deadlifts. I would say that's exercise B. All right, so you got two that are very similar movement patterns as far as your hip hinge movement. So again, you don't wanna just drop down by breaking at the knees. You wanna make sure that you're setting yourself up for success here. I like to start with a shoulder width stance, toes pointed out slightly. You want your chest out and your core strong. So what I do is I put my hands right down here on my thighs, break at the hips, you hip hinge, just like you would in a squat position. And then you start descending, all right? Start descending, descending. The difference between a squat movement and a deadlift movement. Squat movement, the primary drivers are gonna be your legs. Legs, hips, glutes. All of this are the primary movers. And you're, see how low I am when you're doing these? But if you're in this position doing a deadlift and you're coming up, it's basically just a deadlift squat, all right? So you're doing a trap bar squat instead of a trap bar deadlift. The key difference, which is why I say you drop, once you get your hips back, drop down, standing upright, you're gonna keep your hips higher up here in this movement position, but you gotta have a strong core. You wanna support that lumbar spine, all right? So we're gonna grab the weight here See how high my hips are? You're gonna pull and then extend at the hips at the top. So that's what you wanna focus on. That's the main difference. If you see people coming all the way down like this, then basically that's just another variation of a squat. It's gotta be more of a high hip, 
and then hip driver. That's gonna create more emphasis. You're still gonna work your glutes, your hips, and all those things, even hamstrings. But it's more of an overall posterior exercise. So you're gonna be hitting your upper back, mid back, low back, traps. So that's what makes this one of my favorite exercises, all right? So let me demonstrate a couple of these quickly. Again, stand up nice and tall. You don't wanna overextend though. You'll see some people doing deadlifts and at the top, they come all the way back. You don't wanna do that. Again, keep your core nice, tight and engaged, but chest out, shoulders back, drop the hips back, down, drive just like that. And if I had the actual plates on here, I wouldn't be going quite that low. The plates would stop me right about here, so you'll see my hips are still nice and high. That's the goal with this exercise, all right? If you don't have a trap bar, you can do, my next recommended deadlift will be a dumbbell deadlift. Dumbbell deadlifts work the same, all right? Can't go near as heavy on dumbbells, obviously. You can't load up like you could on a apparatus like this or even a barbell deadlift, but you're gonna get really good benefits if you do the dumbbell deadlift. Main thing I really want you to focus on, you gotta make sure you're working more of that hip area, all right? The hip range needs to be more consistent with a deadlift compared to a squat. We've already done the squats with the first exercise, now the goal is to maximize the rest of the posterior chain with the second exercise, all right? So let's move on to my next exercise. All right, for exercise number three, we're going with my favorite chest exercise. So there's different angles when you're doing a bench press. All right, so I'm gonna show you a straight bar bench press, standard bench press, not an incline. I like the 30 degree bench press more, but I realize not everybody has access to an adjustable bench that can hit that 30 degree angle. If you do, then sub this exercise out with that 30 degree, all right? Also, if you just don't like doing barbells or you have really bad shoulders or bad elbows, then I'm gonna recommend you not really do a straight bar anyways. A lot of men over 40 have a lot of wear and tear on their elbows and their shoulders, and being in that fixed overhand pronated position creates a lot more shearing on the shoulders. So if that's you, then do dumbbell bench press. I really like dumbbell bench press as well, Again, the only thing about those, you're limited with the weight. Most of you guys are gonna be able to do enough weight using that exercise anyways, to where I would always recommend doing the dumbbell version of the bench press over a standard straight bar bench press. But I do wanna show, show you a couple different things I want you to focus on when you're doing a bench press movement. All right, first thing you wanna make sure you're doing when you get this weight up, you don't wanna flare your elbows out. You'll see a lot of people flaring their elbows out and bringing them all the way out down to their sides. If you do that, that's gonna put a lot of stress on your shoulder joints. So the thing you wanna do once you get in this top position is bring those elbows in tighter, all right? Also, when you're bringing the barbell down, you want it to be about uh, right at the nipple line, low chest, and then when you're driving, you wanna drive up closer to your neck or chin line, all right? So that's the actual motion you wanna use. Let me show you here. All right, so again, also once you're in this position, I like to squeeze my shoulder blades together and then depress them. All right, you're retracting and depressing the shoulders to keep them safe. Elbows are coming in, nice lower part of the chest, pressing back up. Also control the weight down, don't allow it to drop. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, slight pause, press up. You can press the weight up explosively, but you wanna make sure you're controlling the descent. That's the eccentric contraction. One more here. Nice, slow, under control, little pause, little explosive rep. All right, so that's gonna be my favorite chest movement. Next thing we're gonna do is work the opposite side of the chest, and that's gonna be the mid-back. So for that, I like using dumbbell, or you can use dumbbell for the dumbbell rows, but I'm gonna show you and demonstrate how to do these with a barbell. So for a barbell row, let me turn this so you can see the things I really want you to focus on here. Anytime you're doing a row, if you remember the two exercises we spoke about earlier, hip hinging, all right, you're getting your hips back, dropping your glutes back. You wanna do the same motion when you're getting into this correct position here because you wanna support that lumbar spine. 
The reason I say that, you'll see a lot of people just bend over and grab the weight. You don't want to just bend over and grab the weight because a lot of stress is going to be right on that lower back, that lumbar spine. So again, hip hinge and then sink down into this movement. All right, so once you've sunken down into this movement, I like to maintain a rigid spine. Don't keep your head up, make sure it's all straight. Your neck and your spine should be in the uh, direct line, all right? Nice, tight, rigid, control your core, and then you're gonna drive this into your lower abs. I want you to drive with your elbows back and then drive the bar into your lower abs. So from here, All right, the thing I like about doing the easy curl bar when I'm working biceps, it's a more natural movement pattern on your elbows and your shoulders compared to a standard straight bar, all right? So for that reason, I'm gonna do an easy curl bar, but again, like I mentioned earlier, you can also use dumbbell curls. You can do standard supinating dumbbell curls, alternating dumbbell curls, but either one of those is gonna give you great benefits. But the key points when you're working your biceps, things I really want you to focus on is anytime you're working your biceps, you want your shoulders back, chest out, keep your core tight, control the eccentric phase of the movement, mean the lowering. All right, don't just allow it to drop back to the bottom position. You can explode the weight up. For instance, here, lift quickly, but then 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, slight pause, lift back to the top. Nice and control on the way down. That's gonna give you the best benefits and it's gonna keep tension on those biceps longer, all right? But this is gonna be the last exercise in this workout. It's a great workout, utilizing a lot of compound movements initially, finishing up with a couple isolation movements. But here's the thing that I really want you to do when you're doing this workout. You wanna shoot for three sets, three sets of every exercise, and it's gonna be a standard set workout, meaning you don't wanna set this up as a circuit. You don't wanna do one set of one exercise, move immediately to the next. You wanna do all three sets of the first exercise, then move on to the second exercise, do all three sets, then go to the third exercise and so on, all right? You also wanna shoot for six to eight reps. That's the rep range for all these exercises. Challenge yourself to fail close to that eight rep range. Meaning, don't stop at eight or choose a weight that you're stopping at eight if you know you can do 12 to 15 reps. If you can do 12 to 15 reps with the specific weight, it's not gonna be heavy enough to challenge you for this workout because at the end of the day, it's about, all right, creating more stimulus, boosting your testosterone levels, do all of those things necessary to give you the best benefits of each exercise, all right? So really challenge yourself. Three sets of each of these exercises, six to eight reps each, rest about two minutes in between each set. You can go down as low as 90 seconds if you're very conditioned and you have a good recoverability, but typically it's around two minutes because I wanna make sure each set is gonna be sufficient intensity. You wanna be able to lift heavy enough for the second and third sets. So you want enough time to rest and recover. But let me know in the comment section what you think of this video. Hope you liked the workout. You can do it two times or three times per week, completely up to you. Just make sure you have one or two rest days in between. With that said, that's all that I got. Get busy, get after it, and God bless.